the Holy One of Israel. Among you is the Great and Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary, who believed what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to the town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant left in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. and scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones. And has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel. For he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. We have an interesting selection of readings today. Today is the Feast of the Visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's why we had the Gloria at the beginning of Mass. And today we have a reading from the prophet Zephaniah, and then also we have the recounting of the visitation right, of Mary going and visiting her cousin Elizabeth and John the Baptist leaping in her womb. Something that's kind of interesting about this when you look at it in terms of the grand picture of salvation history is that one of the most important events in the Old Testament was when Jerusalem was established as the capital of of Israel. As you all remember, one of the great promises that God made to the Israelites is that when they entered into the promised land, he would give them the power to conquer the promised land. And it would be basically the land of milk and honey. It would be the land for God's promised peoples. But it took many centuries in order for the Israelites to be able to conquer the whole holy land. That's why King David was such an important figure. It was not until the time of King David that all of Israel was subdued and Jerusalem was made the capital. And as the crowning ceremony, David had the Ark of the Covenant brought into the city right, and placed in its place of honor. And famously, David danced. He leapt as the Ark of the Covenant was being brought into the city. Right? The evangelist Luke wants us to see this when we see Mary visiting Elizabeth. Scholars have pointed out that especially when you're reading this passage in Greek, it's supposed to sort of mimic what had happened back in the Old Testament. Right? The Ark of the Covenant was lost at the fall of the Babylonian exile when the temple was destroyed and burned. The Ark of the Covenant was lost. So what the evangelist Luke is specifically trying to point out to us as we read this is that the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, is coming back to his people. We know that Mary herself represents the Ark of the Covenant. We know that in the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament, right? it had the showbread, it had the manna, it also had the Ten Commandments, it also had the rod of Aaron. So Mary, in her womb, also has the living bread, who gives the new law, who is the great high priest. Right? All these different things Luke is trying to get us to see in this passage. I think it is rather beautiful how the church actually has us read from this prophet Zephaniah as a foreshadowing 
the Zephaniah who was prophesying during that time of exile, during the time where the people of Israel were living in exile and the Ark of the Covenant was no longer among them and the temple had been destroyed. And they hear this beautiful foreshadowing about what would happen in the days of Jesus. And in a mysterious way, right, it's also a foreshadowing of what each of us are living in today. In the scriptures, when prophecies speak about Israel and when they speak about daughter Zion, right, it can refer to individual people like Mary, but it also refers to the entirety of God's people, as in the church today. And so how fitting it is. The church has us read this from the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Be glad, exult, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel is in your midst. The Lord your God is in your midst. A mighty Savior. When the church has us read this reading from the prophet Zephaniah, we're supposed to think of it as referring to us, what we are all living in, that we should be rejoicing for the Lord our God is in our midst. Like John the Baptist and the womb of Elizabeth, we should be leaping for joy every single time we come to Mass, every time we enter into the church, entering into God's presence, that he has removed his judgment from us and he is in our midst. And we should rejoice and shout for joy. 